to capture a standard wide field fluorescence image, navigate to the acquisition tab, select wide field monochrome, ensure that the camera slider is all the way out. Quickly getting an image on the screen can be done by ticking on the channels that you are interested in imaging. In this case, the MCherry, GFP and DAPI channels. By selecting these, I can run a set exposure, which will go through these three channels, configure the exposure time settings, and I can also perform a fine focus to run autofocus on my sample. I can select live for those three channels. They have good illumination. I can then hit snap and we have a three channel image in our container on the right hand side ready to be saved. Down the bottom, we have our tools to see the dimensions of the image, to add custom graphics, or to adjust the histogram to display the image. Look up tables suited for the screen, either by min max, a best fit, we can reset them, we can individually adjust channels by manually dragging or doing auto by selecting all and auto. The 2D image has the option to be split to see the th individual channels as well as a merge. Gallery view will show merged Z slices or time series. The 2.5D will show a 3D model of the intensity profiles of your image. The profile tool lets you click and drag a line scan across an image to look for co-localization. The histogram will show you the histogram of your image as well as the raw values, as well as some statistics on those. The measurement tab allows you to perform measurements on your image and the info tab shows you the metadata for your image capture, including the filters that were used and the settings such as exposure times. So you can quickly take a 2D multi-channel image by performing a fine focus, a set exposure and a snap. Next to snap is a two by two, three by three, etc., where you can take a quick tile of multiple image positions to get a better overview of your sample. This isn't stitched by default. And if you intend to capture tile images, the multi-dimensional tile mode should be used. From this snap using the set exposure and find focus, you can then tweak the settings for more reproducible captures. To get a live image on the screen, select the live and the channel that you are on will be the active channel that is displayed. Working from the M Cherry channel, we can see that it has a 25 millisecond exposure time and we have good dynamic range. For GFP, we have a 21.1 millisecond exposure time, which we can tidy up to have a 25 millisecond exposure time. For the DAPI, we also have a 12.659 millisecond exposure. This can be tidied to a 15 millisecond exposure. Should you feel you need to adjust the focus of the image further, you can use the control key and scroll the wheel up and down to ensure you are in focus. You can also use the range indicator 
to change the lookup table from the, for example, blue to a now grayscale lookup table where saturated pixels will be displayed red. If we increase our exposure time where we have saturation, we can easily see these red pixels being displayed. We can use a set exposure here to manually set the exposure. We can restart our live capture and we can adjust that to a more round number. When using the range indicator, pixels displayed as blue will have an intensity of zero and are below the detection range of the camera. You do not want underexposed pixels or saturated pixels. There should be no blue and no red visible. The set exposure for wide field monochrome is set to ensure that the dynamic range reaches approximately 30% of the chip, which is usually sufficient if you need to perform downstream applications like deconvolution. The set exposure also has different settings for apitome mode versus wide field monochrome mode. And you should ensure that you're in the correct experiment mode 